I haven't felt that way about one particular character before, but I can understand, like I said, I can understand the attachment, especially if that character is, you can see yourself in a character or you just attach yourself to that person or that character. Then I can, mm. I mean, I, I can empathize with it. Um, uh, what is the deal with Mo culture? So if you don't know, Mo is in m- most basic terms, Mo means a viewer has an innocent affection for a fictional character that isn't necessarily romantic or sexual in any way but i think the question here is you know there's a lot of a lot of fans who get emotionally attached to anime characters um sadly we know and we've said it on the podcast some person fortunately ended their life um when they found out um tachi you know passed away Mm -hmm. and there's other instances where people are very very attached and i think anime fans in general are attached to anime in general but I think it goes even a level deeper when some anime fans truly, truly identify and, you know, put their hopes and dreams in some anime characters when really they're just fictional characters. But I, I can see why, because, you know, sometimes, again, so Solo said it, Dr. Solo said it, anime does, it does not identify, but it does speak to other people who identify as other. And sometimes those people don't necessarily have friends or so on and so forth. So this is the characters or characters or animes which they essentially put their, I guess, their their friendshipness into. But yeah, what's your thoughts on that? <clears throat> I think you said it quite well. I think you said it quite well. I think, um, I, think that I, I didn't even know there was a name for that. I had no yeah, idea I didn't that, know that was that was just a name uh, for that. Mo, Mo culture, search. right? Mo Mold culture. culture. M O E, yeah. M O E, Mo culture. No, I think. Um, I think yeah, when you need people attach themselves to a character, and actually, you could even argue it's not just anime. You see the number of fans who love Marvel or Star Wars or Star mm. Trek or insert any kind of those those kind of this big Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, like this. They're, mm. they're fans that really like tie themselves to a character, and I think it's under. I, I mean. Uh, I haven't felt that way about one particular character before, but I can understand, like I said, I can understand the attachment, especially if that character is, you can see yourself in a character or you just attach yourself to that person or that character. Then I can, Mm. I mean, I I can empathize with it. Um, But it is an interesting, interesting type of situation to to witness, to see people so, I mean, because if it wasn't anime, think about like celebrities and people mm, fainting yep. over michael people, jackson yep. And yep. oh that was crazy one direction and the beatles yep. and yeah yeah yep. insert yep. insert 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 mm. many different so it's the same thing so clearly it's there the is like thing, this yeah. human something in our human condition we if we see something that just taps into certain parts of our psyche we can't detach it and i think i've and always I think wondered that you know I think Why? sometimes I think it's unfair this this one but sometimes when people say just go outside and touch grass I think that's what the, the the I get the point I think it always comes across a bit harsh to me but I guess the point they're making is that their life can be so much more and if sometimes if you've only been experienced to one part of life or you have only one thing and it's the only thing that gives you hope then mm. that's that you're going to tie yourself to that strongly strongly so I mean, I don't want to question or comment on mental, the mental health side of it, but yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, I think you're right. I think um, also we have to sometimes, whether it be like you mentioned, songs, films, anime, mm, 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 mm. they can speak to some people in a way Hundreds. that you know. Yeah. And that's probably why you know they fan the boy or fan girl over a specific thing. So. Yeah, you just don't know, man. These yeah. things can change people's yeah. lives, so it's crazy. All right, last question. Very easy one. What are some classic anime that everyone should watch? Akira. So, thank you, everyone, for listening <laughs> to the episode. <laughs> it's as simple as that. If you uh... haven't watched Akira, go and watch Akira. It's as simple as that. Or Neon Genesis Evangelion as well. But um, there's some. Uh, there's actually Sword and the Stranger as another classic. Oh, I used to watch oh, Pokemon. But anyway, yeah, it's a classic. Or don't. Yeah, yeah. I know. Should I say why? Ed, how old is that thing now? I mean, yeah, it's but it's, <laughs> it's a classic. Why is it's it still old. going on? It's old, but why is it still going on? Like when is when is a classic? It's gone. It's it's, it's there to be 
consumed um, years after, not just it's still going on Pokemon. So yes. if you're gonna say Pokemon, you have to specify modern day which classic. year. It's a modern. You day have to classic. say Pokemon Ash, Misty, Brock, 1998 to 2003. <laughs> <laughs> I have to give a timeline. First generation, Ash, only, baby. Yeah, First exactly. Generation. Back Pikachu when Gary somehow. was the bad. Gary and yeah, <laughs> yeah, the bad guys. <laughs> exactly that that was classic pokemon there but for sure but yeah thank you very much we've come to the end of 21 questions wait this is a throwback quickly click on the next video before it destroys it it's raccoon Boom! it's still there though yes but in his mind it's gone